What else happened during that round three of Vintage? To the surprise of absolutely no one, the last match going. Of course. Of course, Stephen Menendian. Stephen Good always. player, but definitely a deliberate thinker. Uh, it was one of those things right when I ran into Steve on Friday. Yeah. He's like, I was watching him play old school magic. Yep. He's like, you know what, Bob, you've given me a hard time about it, but you're probably right. My favorite part of magic is just the thinking. <laughs> That's well said. His favorite part of magic is the thinking part. Yep. It's fine. Yeah, he did. He made the semis of the old school tournament. He oh. was third. Ran into me in the semis. Had to end his tournament there. Yep. But he actually, I was the only one to beat him. He went undefeated in the Swiss. Oh, he wow. was the only, uh, I guess, 6-0 and o player. Yeah, six rounds of Swiss. So he was the only 6-0, and o, one seed. And then uh, I beat him in the semi. Yep. Mine twisted him for seven. As it should be. That's That was fun. That's, that's fun. I mean, I had the game kind of like... He has two lands, I have a strip mine and a chaos orb. I'm just like, I have a plan, hit the land with the chaos orb, strip the other one, and then he didn't draw land for a little while, so he's actually discarding the hand size. When he finally played a land, I'm like, all right, time to deploy mind twist for everything. Yeah. So, yeah, at, when we left you, round three was still ending. Currently, round three is still ending. I think I hear, I hear a printer going. I think oh, it may fair. actually be printing pairings right they now. Finally got, I mean, the last five turns are incredibly problematic with Menendian because there's, there's <laughs> not a real rush. Yeah. Uh, other results, I know that uh, the Matt Costa versus Danny Batterman match, yep. super interesting. Matt Costa won it. Yes. So from the, the sort of Grixis Delver side, Costa's actually got my copy of the, the Grixis Pyromancer deck. And he felt like he was actually advantaged there. Um, Danny almost won game three because he forgot to side out the Tolarian Academy, drew it in the opener, and almost <laughs> turned one dim. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, uh, Matt got game one with the, uh, the one Dak Faden. He set it up where Danny could play a Belcher but not activate it, and mm -hmm. then he stole the Belcher with Dak Faden well, to win it, game one. So, so the story I heard was there was Belcher on the table okay. and two Moxes. Okay. And he had to say go. Okay. And he knew, I think from a like detection from that there was one missed up in his hand. And he was sitting on a mana vault. And he drew Soul Ring. Oh, and he's okay. like, ooh, he has Soul Ring. Right. It's missed up. And he goes, mana vault. He goes, missed up it. Ooh. Untap, deck fade, and take your belt there. Oh, <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. So. Crazy. The, so okay, the so big yeah. swings of vintage, yeah. Yeah, and then the game two. I mean, that Belcher deck won like a ten turn crazy game too. Belcher deck is capable of winning a ten turn game. It's a lot more resilient than you'd think for. I mean, it looks at first blush like this is just all in combo deck. Like you know, blah, try to move in on turn with one or two and see if you win. But it's got force of will. It's got pact of negation. And then the third game, the way Costa wins it is. Uh, Danny uses, uh, he plays Diminishing Returns, and he uses Pact of Negation to force it through. Mm -hmm. Can't win off the Diminishing Returns, and Matt managed to blow up enough artifacts that he couldn't pay for the Pact Trigger on his upkeep. <laughs> and so that was, that was game three. It's great. I mean, yeah. it's great vintage. Like, yeah. just... Luis has sounded like he had a great round, too. I was talking to Luis. He is 3-0. Yes. Uh, he's playing Oath. He was playing against Dredge, and uh, he said his Dredge opponent had two bazaars and a force of will in game one like yeah you can put force of will in dredge because it's sure. like why don't you have enough blue if you throw in missteps and force of wills you know the narc and are terrible when you draw them so right. pitch those like you can get 16 blue cards in your in your blue deck so i mean yeah worst case scenario just hits the bin after the dredgers so anyway dredge guy crushed luis game one yeah. but luis is like he sideboarded for dredge plus shops Plus, I think my main deck can beat everybody else. Yeah, that's the way Luis has built his uh, has built his sideboard, and Luis came back and won the uh, won the sideboard of games. So he's three zero. I just heard it sounds like we are going to get Danny Batterman. So great. I am eager to see his take on Belcher. It's uh, it's definitely a cool deck. I think he may legitimately have improved it from the the version that Chris and I were running in VSL. I think he has. Um, I'm still not sold on necessarily what the right number of Tezzerits or other right, cards. but the idea of like I, the people, idea of land grant for Tropical Island, I think, is the right direction. And and to be fair, I mean, land grant in Belcher isn't all that innovative. That's the way right. all the legacy versions of the deck have always worked. I mean, it's in vintage that oh, you want Tolarian Academy. But the thing is, the the real innovation for me is you put the you still an Academy deck. You just started in the sideboard where you can Living Wish for it. Right. I mean, it's like the Burning Wish decks that all have their young must well on the sideboard. Right. It's where they right, want right, it, right. it's actually easier to get to it there. Absolutely true. So. Four Living Wishes to get the one Tolarium Academy out of the sideboard. You know, a couple of Silver Bullet creatures, like yeah. Kodalta Forge Master that you can pick up in a pinch. He's got a workshop in his sideboard. He does have a workshop in his sideboard, which so, you can so also Living Wish for. Yeah, just generating mana to get your moxes out. And then uh, Kai had done this, actually. So Chris and I played 
played the Blue Belcher deck in Vintage Super League. Kai then followed up. He added Spirit Guides to the deck. Right. Danny, I mean, is Elder Spirit Guides. Green Man is even relevant. Right. Absolutely. So you get some nice, uh, nice sideboard cards out of green. You know what his anti-control tech is? Have you seen this part yet? No. So the problem with Defense Grid, which is what I, I always ran in the deck, is they just blow it up, right? It's an right. artifact, and eventually they can pay for it. <clears throat> so what you really want is something, you know, you might be willing to pay extra to just not have to worry about any of those things. City you need more solitude. hits. City of Solitude. Two and a green, enchantment. Yeah, you can't, nobody can do anything on their opponent's turn. Yeah, that's the hard stop. Pretty awesome. So yeah, here is Danny's deck. He is playing against James Bauer, who... <laughs> his deck list is put into the computer and typed up and has probably been locked in for <laughs> days, if not weeks. Oath. This is an oath list. Oh, I'm sorry. When I saw it typed up, I thought that was... No, this is Danny's. Danny's. Oh. Danny wrote in pen. Oh, no, but I mean, it's just one of those things like, you know somebody's prepped when they show up with, <laughs> they a, show pre up with a pre printed deck, deck list. list. Yeah. It, to be fair, it has some scribbles on it. Fair, He's crossed out fair. a few things. Only in Vintage does Library of Alexandria get scribbled out and Murderous Cut written in on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Oath of Druids, uh, the creature said, I assume it's just going to be a couple Grizzle Brands? Where? Three Grizzle Brands. Oh, so no training wheels, probably. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, he's got vault key. Memories, journey. Or... He's got vault key. He's got two show and tells, and that's really the tech that I think Oath did win this tournament last year. Mm -hmm. Right. Mark Taco won it with uh, with an Oath deck, and at that point it was essentially just Grizzle Brands and attack with them. The show and tell tech has really evolved as oh, that's how you beat Graft Digger's Cage. Right. Like absolutely. Mark managed to win essentially because he hit a field that was all Delver decks, and mm -hmm. Oath is just the nightmare matchup for Delver. Not as much Delver nowadays, but way more Graft Digger's Cages. So you kind of, yeah, you, hey, you have show you and tell. you the Oath out with a Graft Digger's Cage, like you Oath and you hit Grizzlebrand, it just goes on top of your deck, and then yeah. you draw it, and you get to show and tell it out. Yep. So show and tell really making a big impact on the sideboard plans against. But that, that plan's a little slow against Belcher, so the real question <laughs> little, here is... A little slow against Belcher. What do you have in terms of the ability to break up a Belcher combo? One Fluster Storm, four Force of Will, one Mana Drain, three Mental Misstep. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. A Hercules in the main. Oh, in Misdirection, which that doesn't do much. Is a Swan Song, too. Swan Song, I mean, you dream about Swan Song with Oath, right? Yeah. I counterspell something and give you the creature to turn my Oath on. That is certainly the dream. Obviously, the, uh... I mean, his sideboard seems really good against Belcher, but we'll see how game one goes. Three Steel Sabotage, three Nature's Claim. Yeah. A couple of Abrupt Decays, it might matter. I don't know. I don't even know if the Abrupt Decays are good enough. They yeah, probably I don't know either. Are, but they probably are in conjunction with the other six cards. Yeah, and then obviously, if you haven't seen Vintage Oath of Druids, the real combo is Forbidden Orchard. Right, just right. Forbidden Orchard Oath. Forbidden Orchard, like your turn one of Forbidden Orchard, any mocks, and an Oath of Druids is damn close to a turn one kill. Yes. It's intensely difficult to beat. Yeah. Looks like we have them shuffling up. Yeah. Danny's, Danny's going to five. Mulliganing to five. The People's Cannon is Danny's name for this deck. <laughs> yeah, and he's uh, I mean, he's he's one of the fixtures in the vintage community. I don't know if we've talked that much about Danny Batterman's backstory, but you know, he tests a lot of vintage. He plays a lot of vintage. You know, he's his teammate for vintage is Ari Lax. Right. So like Ari's got his Pro Tour team, and then he's got his vintage team. Like Ari played this tournament last year. I mean, a yeah. little bit busy this week. There is the small matter of a World Championship that starts in Seattle like three days from now. There's a the registration is tomorrow at the Wizards of the Coast office. So that's, that's where I'll see BDM at the registration party tomorrow. <laughs> so he's in Seattle. He's play testing. He's actually holed up with Brad Nelson. Oh, play wow. testing in Seattle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Huh? So the two of them, they'll be joined by uh, by a couple other more teammates. Steve Rubin, who lost in the semifinals of the WMCQ, was also going to be testing with those guys and Seth Manfield. Yeah, so, so Team Lux put four into Worlds. Any, anyway, Ari's vintage team, Danny Batterman. So here's Land Grant. Land this Grant. is part of the new tech. I'll reveal my hand. It's not a very good hand, right? It's two preordains, an Elvish Spirit Guide, and what's the card on the left? 
Um, is that a new picture on Mana Crypt? Oh, Force of Will, your land grants. It is tough when you get to see the rest and make perfect decisions. I, I, Force of Will, it seems like a smart Force of Will. Yes. And Danny's just gonna do the sportsman-like thing of leaving his hand face up. Oh, it boy. is known Force information. Force of Will with Force of Will. And uh, I think I saw a Lotus in there too. We're just gonna see if, how quickly this gets out of hand. Yeah, Danny really needed that Tropical yes. Island, right? Tropical Island turns on the two preordains. Obviously, it's always awkward when you mulligan to five. That mulligan to five could have worked out. And certainly a keeper. Yes. But Spirit Guide doesn't make the blue mana for preordain, so he's kind of stuck. So many foils in all of these decks. Kind of cool. A very shiny polluted delta on top of the graveyard. Very shiny. And I'm just... I enjoy the fact that people... Some people want to interact with the format that way. Like, yeah, however, no, just, however anyone wants to engage with the game. The love and the care me. from vintage players is kind of remarkable. There's Black Lotus. But nothing to do with it. It was a mana oh. crypt. Oh, foil mana crypt, sure. Green into... Living Mish. Wow. Yeah, I get my Academy, please. Not a bad top deck. Probably works. Yeah. Telerian Academy out of the sideboard. That makes a blue mana, thanks to the mana crypt. Still has a has one colorless floating. Yeah. But the preordain runs into a mental misstep. Okay. But game on. Hey, yeah, we're back to playing Magic. I mean, Danny's at three mana and has a preordain to cast next turn. He's at three mana that starts to multiply very quickly. Absolutely. This deck has all the artifact mana. Four copies of Chrome Mox, although that's not ideal here. It does still as Mox Sapphire. Yep. Like with Tolarian Academy in play, even if you don't imprint, your Chrome Mox is effectively a Mox Sapphire. He actually only runs three Mox Opals. Ah. Doesn't like the card in multiples since it's legendary, so he chooses to only run three. Yeah, all that artifact mana means you get the Claren Academy, it's kind of awesome. Might even be good on the five card, I got my land grant, force of will draw. We'll see. I mean, James can't have much left. He's only got two cards, right? Yeah, I and mean, he just played a key that doesn't do much. Right. If he had the vault in hand, he'd just crack the Lotus and, and get to work. Oh, time twister off the top. Wow. I mean, it's a really big and it game. Resolves. But you're, you're now, you're not twistering into somebody who has Lotus Key in play. Eh, so, I think you absolutely go for it. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that that was not correct. This is actually the one situation. So, one of the cards Danny cut in order to make room for the Living Wishes and the Land Grants is the Candelabra of Tanos. This uh -huh. is actually the one situation where Candelabra of Tanos is good when you have to tap your Academy to go for the draw seven. Right. Like, Candelabra would make a million mana here. Uh, as it is, though, the only way he's going to get a mana from that Academy off the Twister is if he somehow stitches a Time Walk together. Anyway, it's a pretty, it's a narrow scenario. I, I don't blame him for cutting the Candelabra. I mean, he's got to make room for eight green cards and there's only four expedition maps as obvious cuts, so. Made sense to me. It's just, yeah. now we're in one of the rare scenarios where you really actually, Candelabra could be good if it was in the deck. All right, Time Twister. I saw a Petal, I saw a Spirit Guide. I think that's a Soul Ring. Well, he gets a Probe here, which helps he's his got decision a tinker. making a lot. And he's got a Tinker, can he get, it doesn't have the ability to get to three mana, I don't think. Uh, right. Spear Guide, Soul Ring. He doesn't have a blue mana. Right. No, he's got a pedal. He does have a blue mana. All right. Gitaxian Probe sees not much. What's the card at the top? Right. It's three lands, a Mox, a Forbidden Orchard, a Brainstorm, and what's the blue, the shiny blue card? Yeah, it's, it's I think what? it's the promo Grizzlebrand, actually. Oh, it's Grizzlebrand. That hand doesn't do anything. No, that hand is pretty terrible. It's a Brainstorm and nothing. So Danny can Soul Ring off the Spirit Guide. He Petal. can play a Petal for blue mana. Tinker. He can Tinker. He can put Belcher oh, he, into he play. Just hit his one Tropical. Oh, hilarious. 
He hit randomly hit the one tropical island. You still can't activate so, this, right? So the lands are gone out of his deck. Yeah, no lands in his deck. Brainstorm in response. Yeah. Sack Lotus for Brainstorm. James needs to counter this. Danny is threatening to put a Belcher into play. Now, I don't think he has any colorless mana. I think he's going to have to say go. He's not going to be able to activate the Belcher, but as soon as he gets to untap, he'll have the three mana to activate the Belcher, and guess what? Zero lands in the library. It is well beyond lethal at this point. Even when there is one land in the library, it's usually lethal. Yeah. It's a solid coin flip. It's, it's like 60% in your favor. So, Brainstorm, did you find a Force of Will? Found a Fluster Storm. That was a huge Brainstorm. Sack the Lotus for blue, Brainstormed into Fluster Storm to stop the Tinker. And to stop everything. I'm not sure what he's got left in his hand. I mean, pre-Brainstorm, his opponent's hand didn't do much either. No, it's true. They may, they may just now stare at each other a little bit. And Danny, of course, sacked his Mana Crypt to the Tinker, so he's not in the danger of accidentally killing himself. Did James, well, James found a fetch land, so... So he doesn't have to look at that last card. Right. Which I'm going to guess is the Grizzlebrand being yeah, shuffled in. It may be a giant creature, yes. Well, before he had to sack the Lotus, he wasn't that far off. That's true. It's true. Yeah, James... Ponders. Time Vault! It's an instant win. That's yes. the card James really wants. He wants a Time Vault or he wants a Tutor for Time Vault. I think there's a Force of Will in there. That's the next plan is stay alive. And I think there might even be a Force of Will in his hand also. So, I mean, there might be blue cards for each other, but... Brainstorm worked out. Wow, Danny probed, saw that all the only defense was a Brainstorm. Now with that Soul Ring, he can hard cast the Force of Wills. Two mana, untap it with key. And a vault. And there's that pedal that he didn't actually need last turn. Yeah, now Danny Seven just mana. needs any action. He's got four belchers, he's got two tesserets, he's got three more dra draws, three more diminishing returns. Plus there's a twister in the yard. Forbidden Orchard for James means oaths are now good. But Danny's just drawn mana. I mean, he's back to Grizzlebrand mana, should he care to <laughs> cast it. He shuffled it away. Certainly. But there's still three of them in there to just draw. No, you're right. Oaths are good draws and Grizzlebrands are good draws. Oh, that's fair. Preordain's not bad. I mean, you look at two cards and then can potentially push two of them. There's a lot of action in Danny's deck. Yes. Right, what is it? Four, six copies of Belcher, if you count the Tezzerets. And three, three-ish draw sevens. I think it's just exactly three draw sevens. Deck's a little better at winning long games than it seems like Four. it should be. Five. Five. One of which is presumably blue. Use two of it to Living Wish. All right, what does Living Wish get here? Forge Master? James is just going to hard cast a Force of Will. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to find out. I don't want to know. If there's a land that I can't... I can't counter spell lands. Wow. Floating blue mana, hard cast my own force of will. Now, Living Wish does resolve. It yes, is both the Forge, Forge Master. That's clever. He has. He doesn't have six Belchers in his deck. He has ten. ten. Oh, he's yeah. one short of playing it he though. He is indeed. How ridiculous would an Oath of Druids here be? Who's Academy? <laughs> Approximately infinite mana for James Bauer now. Three, seven, nine, ten, yeah. twelve. That's, that's a ton. Right. Danny goes for Forge Master. Does James have a counter? He does. Force of Wills were blue cards for each other briefly, but hard casted. They both counter. Here we go again. Ancestral. Very dense stack. Oh, and he wants the other one too. He wants the Ancestral. He's going to top top. Is. <laughs> it's never a good sign when your opponent goes top top with no. the preordain. No, it is not. It, it's even worse when Buck they go <laughs> top top Ancestral myself. Yeah. yeah. 
think James is now out of counters. Oh, it was a diminished was the other card. And he drew a Char Belcher. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's ball game. He just plays it's, it's and it's activates it's... a Char Belcher. Show me a counter spell or you're dead. The People's Cannon. Yeah, okay. Ooh. James wants to see the deck list. Yep. This is just James. He knows he's dead, but he wants to know what, what Danny's up to. It's not like they have deck Show lists. Show me the rest. Like this, yeah, he's this, like, that's 20. He's like, no, this, it keeps resolving. Yeah, this effect has not resolved. <laughs> In fact, the entire deck gets revealed. James gets to look at it. He's already seen the tech, right? I mean, if he... Most people in Vintage nowadays, I'm pretty sure, know about Blue Belcher. It's just like, the green twist is certainly new to this event. This is it, Danny showing it off for the first time. But I think that's a perfect example of what you're talking about, of how this version of Belcher, or Belcher in general, has more staying power than most people realize. Yes. And that game was many turns. Oh yeah. And I didn't even realize after having talked thought thought about the list, talked to Danny a couple days ago, the Living Wishes are Belchers. Yeah. With the Forge Master. With the Forge Master. They living Wish for Forge Master. That's something sickness, yeah. understood. But like when you're in the top deck battle and you're just like, here's a threat that you have to counter. Here's a threat that you have to counter. And you mm -hmm. saw him just like work his way through all those force of wills. Yeah, how good is expedition map when after the academy it just goes to get Belcher? Bingo. I'm in. I'm, I'm sold on the deck now. Yeah. That is what puts me over the top. Because like, I'm like, okay, Expedition Map versus Living Wish. Living Wish is more expensive, but but okay, you get this land grant tech. Like that was all like, I think you turned a profit on the change, but it wasn't obvious. The fact that your second Living Wish is a Forge Master, right. whereas right. Your, second to your second Expedition, expedition Map, expedition map which is powers Tellurian Academy. Metalcraft for Mox Opal. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's all it does. It's like one mana, I am an artifact. Yeah. Oh, that's I'm great. in. I'm in. Wow, and that, that's at least twice today he's won games with Forge Master. Yeah. But this is a thing that this just legitimately comes up. That's awesome. Very cool. Now what happens? Now they sideboard. Well, and I see uh, some people in the mm -hmm. in the chat saying I didn't that they thought one of the biggest issues was getting your mana started. It was, the original deck only had yes. what twelve ways to get from zero mana to one mana, yep. and that's why Living Wish. Yeah, Living. Or, uh, that's why. That's that why Land, Land Grant so started. Good. That's why suddenly you have five extra ways to get to one mana. Right, you can just draw the tropical, or right. you have four Land Grants for it. Totally. So now instead of twelve ma re ways to get from zero to one mana, you're up to seventeen, and it just it should reduce the number of mulligans. Not that it did there. Yeah, that was the mulligan to five. That was game. a mulligan to five. That was mulligan to five. Win. Land Grant. Grant revealing my hand. Later. Oh wow, you have a force of will. Yeah. That was that game. That was impressive. Yeah, he force of will with force of will. And then hard cast two more force of wills. Now he drew all four of them. Yeah. <laughs> Bowling into five, fight through four force of wills. Drew all four of them. And drew that fluster storm off the brainstorm. No problem. Danny wins anyway. The people's cannon, ladies and the gentlemen. The people's cannon indeed. Uh, get some updates on the other feature matches for you. Luis Scott Vargas is down a game against Ian McEwen. Jarvis Yu is down a game against Vincent Farino. What do you think uh -oh. he's playing? <laughs> a boa constrictor deck? <laughs> like a boa constrictor. I can't do the accent. I'm going to keep <laughs> trying though. Apologies in advance. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Menendian got a draw in that last round. 2 0 and 1. Shocked. Five extra turns, 20 extra minutes, not good enough. Oh, Greg Mitchell's 3 0. He, uh, he's the guy I played in the finals of Friday Night Magic in Seattle last weekend. <laughs> Flew out as. Yeah, kind of funny. He and his group, they think they take their vintage pretty seriously, too. I feel like I recognize that name. Is that. Sullivan Brophy? Yeah, I recognize the name. Who else is here and doing well? Steve Rubin is 3-0. Oh. He hopped in after getting knocked out of the WMCQ, just okay. like Matt Costa did. Right. Uh, Brian DeMars, 3-0. Paul Mastriano, 3-0. Rich Shea. Oh, Rich Shea is playing Josh Ravitz this round. Oh, wow. That's a good match. A lot of names starting to collide. And so it begins. We have Academy for Preordain, Mox, and then it begins. See what the people's cannon has in store this time. Mana drain, force a will. Misstep, oath, and an orchard. Is that an oath? It is an oath, right? Yes. Okay. 
Wow, so he must have preordained into one of those pieces. Yes. He wouldn't have declined the, Forbidden the Orchard turn. Jet Oath yeah. with Force of Will and Misstep. Wow, that's all sick. How fast is Danny? Yeah, all right. Randomly drew the tropical. Yep. Lots of mana. Diminish. Yeah, it's like, that's not a hand I can beat. <laughs> I mean, you force a will, obviously. I have a feeling you just get forced back, or something's gonna happen here. Oh yeah, I saw a preordain in Danny's hand that he wasn't casting, I guess it's because that's the blue card for force a will. So force, force back. Yeah, this yeah is, let's start over. This is just flat out, um, well, I can't beat that hand. Yep. I mean, it's pretty even, right? Both players have a jet and a land. If anything, James is ahead, although Danny's the one who gets to go first. Now, Danny has played his land for the turn, though, so yeah. it's not like he can play an academy this turn. Still, yeah, you just force through Diminish. Yeah, it's... Get rid of the Forbidden Orchard Oath. No, Forbidden none of Orchard that. Forbidden Orchard Oath and three counters? Yeah, none of that. Diminishing Returns, by the way, that's Chris Pakula technology. Chris is the Indeed. one that found that deck. Like, I, I did well with this deck at the Holiday Festival last, last winter, and Chris was from the one trying it for VSL, and he's like, can't we just play Diminishing Returns? And it was such a nice upgrade that I wasn't planning to play it in VSL Season 2, but I moved uh, in yeah. because Chris improved the deck so much with the Diminishing Returns. Goes, Danny obviously agrees. Yeah, first 10 cards get removed from the game, so this is the drawback to Diminishing Returns. You have to exile 10 cards, and that's why you don't see it in a lot of Vintage Combo decks, because most Vintage Combo decks are really relying on one-ofs and restricted right. cards. And like, if your one Tendrils of Agony gets exiled, you're just, you're cold, you can't win the game. This deck doesn't rely on restricted cards, though. The Char Belcher is the victory condition, and so there's any to, number of different ways to, to get again. there. He gets to drop some artifact mana. And how did this one treat you? Maybe he just... All right, a walk. A walk, a claim, and a lot of mana. It's the second blue card, right? Yes. Above the walk? A rebuild? Interesting. No, I can't, I can't, I'm just, it's just wild guesses at this point. <laughs> it's not a rebuild, it doesn't have those. Steel Sabotage? It could be, no, it could be Steel Sabotage. But Lions nothing. Diamond. Nothing that interacts. Can he Belcher? Uh, it's Living Wish, but he's already played a land drop. Yeah. If he could play the Academy here, he would just win the game with Belcher and Lion's Eye. Because I thought I saw a Belcher in his draw, but he's played a land. You've played a land, right. Danny. You're saying go now? Yeah, okay. He's got he's got the kill next turn. And he just drew Vampiric Tutor. And he already had time walk. All right, soul ring. He's up to six mana. Yes. Seven. Yeah, you can do a lot of damage at this point. Time walk. Presumably going to resolve. Now, what do you vampiric tutor for if you're James Bauer? He doesn't have a null rod, right? That's that is well, the nightmare card. Yeah. Like, a lot of people will have one Null Rod on their sideboard just as a tutor target for a matchup like this. Interesting. Danny is Force of Willing the uh, Time Walk. Force of Will, discarding Tezzeret, no extra turn for you. Wow. I mean, he has his opponent down to just one blue mana. Well, one floating, but on his turn, he'll just have one blue up, four mana total. That's where he wants to take his shot. Turn two kill. That taps for four. That's a Char Belcher. Yeah, plenty, like, plenty of mana. Sacks the Lion's Eye just for style points. And there is the handshake. The great. People's Cannon. People's Cannon indeed. 2-0 versus some pretty good draws. Yeah. You definitely got to see, we got to see the deck on display. I like it. I like it a lot. Danny moves to three and one on the tournament. And uh, Jarvis has, Jarvis U has lost 2-0 to Vincent Farino, and Luis Scott Vargas has lost as well. 
So that was a quick feature match round, unfortunately. Luis is, loses to Ian McEwen. He's now 3 and 1. Jarvis Hughes 3 1. Danny Batterman's 3 1. Great. So, I mean, it, the deck doesn't seem quite as lightning fast as it was when you were playing it, but I don't necessarily know why. It seems like it takes a few more turns, but it seems no, it, very it's, resilient. It's basically the same. Is it? I mean, you, you sometimes spe you sometimes spend your land drop on Tropical Island. Maybe that makes it mildly slower. But Living Wish for Academy is actually cheaper than Expedition Map for Academy. Fair. I mean, it's one in a green versus three colorless. Yeah, I think the problem is you have cheaper. to drop the Tropical, whereas you could do it off your Artifact Mana previously. Right. Right. But I think it's... I bet it wins turn two more often. Sure. The turn one kill, the loss of the Candelabra makes you less likely to turn one kill, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but deck looks great. I uh, the fact that Living Wish is a business spell rather than a than a worthless expedition map yeah. is that's a big deal. It's pretty incredible. That yeah. is a big deal. Full the Forge Master. Well, Danny yeah, Batterman. Yeah. yeah. You've been in a workshop. Yeah. You can get the workshop too. Mm -hmm. There's randomly a Mishra's workshop in the sideboard in case you need in case you need more mana. Like they wasted your your academy, or they have you know sphere effects in play. Yeah, I mean it seems quite possible that that. I mean, also the workshop might just come in when you're on the draw against drops. Yeah, it does. It probably yeah. does. That's better than the. That's better than the. Living wishing for it. Yeah. So I think we'll actually uh, get Danny in and, and talk to him a little bit. I know that uh, we were we were hoping to do some deck techs yesterday. We had some technical issues that are preventing us from showing off any any deck tech, any pre-recorded stuff. We even did deck techs from the old school. We'll just have to see if we can get those. We should get those deck tech videos posted to YouTube at some point. Yeah. Old school deck tech videos. So we did record some stuff on Friday. Right. We just are unable to broadcast it to you guys at a decent quality today. So, try to put them on YouTube though. Yeah, we did Menendian's old school deck. We did my old school deck. We did some. We did some uh, some legacy and vintage stuff too, right? Kevin Un, yeah, did some vintage. Roland Chang. Um, yeah. I've, oh, you got Roland's deck. Yeah. Pretty. That'd be fun to watch. So. Yeah, yeah. It's old school deck text. That'd be fun. I assume somebody has sent word to Danny that we want to chat with him. Yeah, it was a quick round. It was a very quick round. Yeah, there are no more feature matches left. All three of them were decided in... in the first uh, 20 minutes, unfortunately. In the first 20 minutes. Welcome, Danny. Hey, what's going on, man? Not too much. Nice job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Um, Please. Yeah. I mean... Deck's great. Uh, actually, <laughs> pulling a little bit I here. Found the, uh, I found This is you can tell this is mono blue Charbelcher, aka the People's Cannon. I, I it's found, not mono blue anymore. No, it's not. But I mean, realistically, it's okay. Fine, it's Simic. Simic Charbelcher. Mm, I don't know if I can get behind that. I don't know. Blue Belcher. Blue Belcher. Blue not Belcher. Blue okay, Belcher. Blue Belcher. You can scoot okay. a little closer. Sure. Not shot. a problem. Uh, yeah, it's Blue Belcher. Um, I found the deck back in like 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. The 2012 or 2013, like Brian DeMars referenced it in an article. Okay. And it was, he was talking about untapping Academy with Time Spiral. And I was like, I have to build this deck. Yeah, your first version of the deck was, because Time Spiral is unrestricted. Yeah. You could play as many Time Spirals as, as well. You can play four Time Spirals, six mana though. So that, but that's where you started. Yeah, that's where I started uh, with the maps. I kind of built it on my own before I scoured the internet to see if I could find the list Mars was talking about. I was pretty close. The guy had like a Cunning Wish board, mm -hmm. which I don't, I mean, he had the Fairy's response, which I thought was pretty cute. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, then I just sat on it for like a few years because I just could. I figured it couldn't be chops ever, and it yep. was just kind of glass cannony. Uh, I gave it to you last year, champs, because I'm like, hey, there's no shops in VSL. Yeah, it's like I have I have a meta game where this might work out. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just been in the back of my mind, and I was like, if I ever play this at champs, I have to make it not lose to itself because the biggest problem with the traditional builds, with the expedition map builds, is that you only have 12 ways to go from zero mana to one mana with four chrome moxes, the five regular moxes, black lotus, lotus petal, mana crypt. That's it. 
and that's like not enough because Legacy Charbelcher plays like 21 and the red green version of Vintage Charbelcher plays like 16 to 20 so yeah. this wasn't enough Spirit Guides is Spirit the best guides, anybody came up with. Spirit Guides is the best anyone came up with. Yeah, now you're Land, at like 14. Yeah, yeah 14. Land Grant like, was thought of, and it was in my mind, mm -hmm. and a streamer, uh, a streamer by the name of Pomegranate, his first name's Ben, also did it, but he had it with two lands. And I didn't like that because if you have two lands in your deck, the play of turn one Charbelcher, pack Indigation, your Force of Will, untap with the pack trigger on the stack, shoot you, like kill you, yeah. became unreliable because you'd, kill your, you'd brick off too often because neither of the lands are mountains. Yeah. And if I can't kill you, if I add another turn to the deck, then why am I not just playing TPS at that point? It's way more consistent. So I think it was like April, it was the end of April, and they just announced champs, and it was earlier than last year, and I was really like, kind of like, oh man, because I put a lot of work. Uh, I also I played Angel City Vault last year, and I put a year and a half into that deck before I debuted it. I was just like, oh man, I, I don't even know what I'm playing. And I'm talking with Rich Shea, and I say, I wish there's like more ways I can get lands. And Rich goes, why not Living Wish? And I just sit there, the light bulb goes on, I make this list, I goldfish it a few times. This is three in the morning, by the way, in LA. Um, I then goldfish it three times, I kill them, like, tur either turn one or like turn two on their upkeep, every hand. And then I just run around my bedroom screaming, <laughs> I broke it, I broke it, I broke it. It's three in the morning. My girlfriend, Jesse Savage, hi by the way, babe, love you, <laughs> who is sound asleep, wakes up and goes, Danny, what did you knock over? I go, no, I broke the format. She's like, that's very nice, go to bed. I'm like, no, you don't understand. She's like, cuts me off, she's like, no, you don't understand, go to bed. <laughs> That I've been holding on to this since April, and I told you about it in Vegas. Well, I you told rolled, me yeah. you broke it. Yeah, I told you, you I broke, what you broke yeah, it. I told, with. Yeah, I told you I broke it in Vegas. Just yeah. Savage slow roll, because like Which this is, is probably the right answer, because it would have been you, hard for me to resist the urge to show should, it off. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> That's why I did it. It was like it was too brief of a time period to make you like swear on an oath. Not yeah. To play it. And it's great. I'm three and one so far. I lost. I lost to Matt Costa last round, which is can't be embarrassed about. Uh, Game one, I had a small window and I missed it. In game three, I got pulverized. <laughs> um, I actually, I actually made a mistake. Oh, that's how he turned. That's how he, he killed you with yeah. the pack trigger. right? Yeah, he killed me with my pack trigger. I, he boarded in pulverized. Of that's, course. Yeah. That he makes killed sense. Me, yeah, yeah, he killed me with my so, pack trigger, and I actually messed up because game two was so long. I forgot to take the academy that he stripped my dad of my graveyard, so I had it in my opener, and I was like, "That's better." <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. And that's the one thing this deck can't do is get academy in the opener. But realistically, like that's so marginal compared to actually being able to keep your hand. Yeah. And play magic like even on that mulligan to five which you know like I could have played yeah. a game of magic there I had double preordain like if yeah, that was yeah, an expedition yeah. map which is what land grant is I would have gone to four and I would have just lost that game yeah. and I would have been you know very salty that my one shot no pun intended on camera is just yeah. me mulliganing into oblivion I will say the the thing that most impressed me that game was actually living wish for Cadolfo Forge Master oh yeah Forge Master's great I, uh, I, I just didn't like when we were talking about the deck I'm like okay you know expedition maps map to land grants and you've got these living wish for the academy but I'm like the fact that the extra living wishes are not blanks. Not blanks. Like they're not just expedition maps sitting in play saying, Hi, I'm a dorky artifact that powers metalcraft, I guess. Yeah. But no, that living wish goes and gets called off a forge master. Yeah. That's awesome. It also gets Mishra's workshop for if they're on like the plan of just blow up all your artifacts and well here's a consistent source of mana. Yeah. Deal with it. Or like a hand where you just only have like one artifact and like a mox and a trop and it's just like, well I'm gonna forge master. It's like I'm gonna living wish for shop, I'm gonna play the shop, and then gonna untap and charbelch and like gonna kill you on the nice. of turn three whatever, which is still fine. I actually did mess up that game one. Uh, the scry on the preordain with the living wish. I had a pack negation on top. I should have kept it because I to play around double force and then killed with the pack trigger on the upkeep because okay. I had my land in play. I, I will own to that one. Okay. Other than that, I think I played okay. <laughs> no, it looked, no, it it looked good. Yeah. I, say, I mean, the first game's a really tough one to win, yeah. right? You just have to slog through all of those horse worlds. Yeah, I mean, it's, it I mean, it's Charbelcher. That's what you have to do is you cheap jamming. Yeah, but I, don't, I feel like people don't realize how often you win the six, eight, ten turn game. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, that was... It's one of the strengths of the deck, I think. Yeah, that's... That you're like, okay, you must deal with this. You must deal with this. And you're able to just keep presenting the steady supply yeah, of must counter the, the, bl the blue decks have gotten so, like, inbred to deal right. with the other fair blue decks uh -huh. that the only things that really matter, like, the only hard counters they have are four Force of Wills. We have seven Force of Wills with four Force and three packed, and then the fourth packed in the board. And the green also gives you access to City of Solitude, yeah. which I got Matt Costa with game two, the one game I won. Nice. Uh, it was just like, City of Solitude. He's like...
And I was aware, I was like, if he polarizes me, I just lose, because I can't counter it, but yeah. whatever, I shut off his deck. Very nice. And any stories from the first few rounds? Uh, yeah, round one I got a buy. Because uh, wow. the guy I was played with was in the top eight of Legacy Champs. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then round two, I played against the guy. I wish I remembered his name. I'm terrible with names. Uh, I okay. played against him last year at round nine in Champs. Oh, wow. So he figured I'd be on combo, and he was also on Dredge. And. Oh, the Dredge matchup. Yeah, he was. Oh, Dredge is so good. I don't have any Grave Hate on my side. I just kill them. You don't need it. You're both faster than them, and you have four reshuffle effects randomly sitting in your main deck. Yeah, it was like, game one was like, he keeps, he goes, because I looked, I was like, I feel like I've heard your name, I feel like I recognize you, he's like, I don't know, I've been around. And he's like, game one, bizarre, turn one, bizarre, go. I'm like, okay, draw my card, Emerald, Pearl, Wish for Academy, Chrome Mox, imprint the, imprint, uh, the second living wish, Lotus, Land Grant, show you Tezzeret and, or no, play the Academy, Land Grant, get my Tropical Island, Tezzeret, Academy for four, Chrome Mox, Tezzeret, get my Charbelcher, Lotus, flip over my deck. Oh, so turn one kill. Yeah, it was turn one kill, on the draw, used all eight, eight of my cards. And then game two, on the draw, I presented a turn one Kaldotha Forge Master with LED. Oh, wow. In the face of an open Rainbow Land, and he claimed it, but I was like, Charbelcher, make him have it. And then I top deck of returns, and then he like Cabal Therapy'd my hand, and then I, like three Cabal Therapies a turn, then I top deck to returns again. <laughs> and he eventually got there, and then game three, I just went like, turn one mana, turn two Charbelcher, kill you. That works. And then Costa, my match was interesting. I already kind of described it. And then, yeah, we talked a little bit about it too. Yeah, that's what, uh, but I, I believe I have the best team in the world. It's Team Degenerate, or Team Degen so for short. Tell us who else is on Team yeah. Degen. It's, um, this is an order of like joining. <laughs> it's yeah. Kevin Long, who I'm giving a special shout out to because he was supposed to be here, but on Friday, he texted me saying he had a sinus infection and he couldn't yeah. fly, he lives in Los Angeles. He was gonna play the same 75 as me. We were working on it for a while. Miss you, buddy, this one's for you. So Kevin Long, uh, Ari Lax, Ben Perry, uh, Joel Lim, Okay. Tom Dixon, Roland Chang, actually no, excuse me, that's wrong order. Uh, Justin Franks, Roland Chang, Brian Kelly, and Harish Siddhartha, uh, that's a local player, and then we just picked up Matt Murray over the weekend. Okay. It's a bit too late to work with him for this year, but for next year, for those of you who follow Vintage, it's myself, Matt Murray and Brian Kelly working on decks together, so nice. this is gonna be fun. Very nice. And then Great. Rich Shea is our concierge, where he won't <laughs> officially commit to a team, but I just kind of, I'm completely open with him. I didn't realize Rich gave you the living wish tag. Now Rich, That's Rich, insane. Rich got it from Brian Kelly, okay. who was just kind of working on his own thing. We were on like, he was working on Living Wish Land Grant on like another coast, but oh, not wow. in the Belcher shell. Okay. We were just on the same wavelength, and then it's just, he, he filled in the missing piece, and was like, oh. And I have not changed a card in the main deck since April. Wow. I have, I've, I've tweaked some cards. I have not changed a card in the main deck. The sideboard has changed a bit. Like the Kaldotha Forge Master was originally a Miss Cutter Hydra. <laughs> no, big dumb creature I can wish for. Can't counter it. Brown you. That seems like a big upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized that very quickly. Do you have much of a sense of the metagame yet? Um, I mean, what we were predicting was like 18% shops. Um, we originally were around like 10% dredge, but I went around yesterday and I found out that every single dealer booth was sold out of Petrified Field. Um, so like, you know, probably maybe 15% dredge. Okay. We thought there was not going to be a lot of oath, but in the trial, oath was everywhere. So probably like 10, maybe 15% oath. Yeah, there was a lot of oath and a lot of shops in the trial. Yeah, a lot of oath, a lot of shops. That's what that's what we noticed. Um, probably like aggregate, if you count the token decks being like young pyromancer, young pyromancer decks, so Delver, the Grixis, yeah. like pyromancer, and mentor. mentor. That's probably like 25, 30%. Um, and I'm just, I'm throwing out numbers. I'm not actually going to think. Like yeah, sure, sure. Big blue is probably like 5%. Blue combo is probably like 5% because there are degenerates like me who just don't care. Um, then like Null Rod decks, like Merfolk, um, 
like merfolk, hate bears, like things like that are probably like seven. Now, is there anything you can do against an Ulrod? I didn't really counter it. Through your... uh, nature's claim out of the board with the tropical island and the Elder Spirit Guide. Uh, kill them before they get it, especially because a lot of the Ulrod decks don't have card manipulation. Mm -hmm. Like they're like junk and they can't tutor for it. Yeah. They don't play Enlightened Tutor because in a format yeah. of Mental Missteps, Enlightened Tutor is terrible. Or they're like Merfolk, yeah. where they don't. They play Ancestral Recall, but they don't play any other because it's too good not to. But they yeah, don't play just, like, any I'm other. Yeah, I have Force of Will and three Null Rods, and cross my fingers, hope I draw one. Basically, um, and like, <laughs> and hope turn two Null Rod is fast enough. Yeah, and like, and they've cut it recently too. They've cut down on them. They're playing like Chalices, which is not any better if they Chalice zero turn one. But like, you can also play around that. You can play around that easier than you play around a Null Rod. Yeah. Um, theoretically, you can wish if they if there is absolutely no pressure, you can wish for an Academy. Use the Academy to just make mana and then Tezzeret ultimate. Mm -hmm. uh, in testing with my teammate Justin, he was playing Oath. He had a Pithing Needle on Charbelcher and a Pithing Needle on Time Vault. And I was like, Tez you know, bunch of mana in play. I was like, Tezzeret, plus one, go. And he was like, go. I untapped, I was like, minus five, attack it with seven Moxes and a Voltaic key. The Moxliest crew ever assembled. <laughs> nice. And so that's like an alternate win con. Uh, Realistically, the only deck that I consider a bad matchup, and this is like ego aside on my own brews, is Shops on the Draw. Shops on the Draw is Leyline of Anticipation and Prey. Yeah. You have 11 relevant cards. You have four, four Leyline of Anticipations, four Force of Wills, uh, two Elvish Spirit Guides, and a Trop. Because realistically, I'm not, I'm not sure there's a lot of decks to say they're a favorite against shops on the draw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but this deck is like 10. percent Yeah, like it's, like it's a lot of decks that are like, okay, you know, I'm like 40. percent Yeah, no, I this have deck all these is, artifact removals. Hopefully, I get to cast them. Yeah, this deck is like really bad against shops on the draw, and like realistically, if you can get one of those, if you could stop the the critical turn is like turn one. If you can yeah. stop all lock piece and like just get all your mana into play, yeah, then you're fine. But the fact that you have to aggressively mulligan your stuff means that there are just times where you're like on a five carder with Leyline, you're just like, I've got like two mana things. Have you actually pulled off a Leyline of Anticipation? Oh yeah, the first time I ever played it, and this is like way before Living Wish, the first time I ever played it, the guy was like, turn one workshop, Trinisphere, and I'm like, hold on. I have a response. I have a response. Mox, Mox, Mana Crypt. Okay, your Trinisphere resolves. I actually, realistically, that's, I'm, I'm changing the story to um, match my friend Eric. Like, Mox, Mox, Mana Crypt, Charbelcher. All right, Trinisphere <laughs> resolves. Yeah. Upkeep. Face. Kill you. Nice. It's uh, pretty close to a turn zero kill. Yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, you needed your first upkeep. I think that I think that counts. I don't know if that counts. No, I don't think that counts. Eh, it's probably a turn one. If I, if I had a Lotus, it would be a turn zero kill. Right. Have you had a turn zero kill? I have not. I've dreamed about the turn zero kill. I've never had I, one. I, I have not. Um, <laughs> I think that might just be relegated to dreams for a while. <laughs> I, I think. This, this story is pretty close. It's close. This story's yeah. one card away. Yeah. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond okay. would work too, so. Yeah, Lion's Eye. Um, yeah, that's really... That's really, I'm just gonna keep jamming this. I'm actually happy that I, the next local vintage event I go to, I get to play this, because I didn't want the decklist getting out. Nice. Um, well, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Great. Glad we got the chance to talk to you. Definitely, thank you. Have a good day, see you around. All right. A little, little bit of excitement this yeah. weekend. Uh, I wasn't about to try and get into word in edge twice. <laughs> That's awesome. So we've got, looks like six minutes left in the round. I think that uh, we will take a break. Yep. We will be back for round five coverage here at Vintage. I think uh, Bob and I are gonna go check in, see if we can get, get some more stories, tell you guys what else has happened here during round four. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back as soon as round five gets close to starting. Bob and I will have more Vintage for you.